Welcome back to another episode of Black Girls Texting. It's your girl, Shari. Hey, bitches. It's your girl, Charles Pinky. I didn't know we were singing and I'm not prepared. It's Glenn. Oh, I kind of said it. <laughs> that was melodic. We have Dr. Jenatin back in the group chat. I am so excited and welcome back to another episode of Black Girls Texting. These next couple episodes are really going to be focusing on our products. So apologies in advance, but like if you start a business, obviously you're going to start talk about the product. So, you know, so if you know, you know, if you're like, oh my gosh, girls, I can't take it and then skip on over to the next episode. But this is going to give you everything that you want to know about not just our product, um, all things summer skin related, all things skincare trend related. So I recommend you stick around. If you have been an OG listener, then you already know who is here, Dr. Jenatin, who you actually were here in 2022, which is crazy. So it's been two years since you last joined us. And I'm so excited you're back. Um, give you guys a little bit of background on Dr. Janet. And she's a true believer in the power of beauty as something beyond aesthetics. She's a board certified oh, Ocalofacial plastic surgeon. Ocalofacial? Wow. Did I say that Ocular right? facial. <laughs> you're almost there. Oculofacial. I hope I did. Oculofacial, Close. okay, <laughs> and founder of Brooklyn Face and Eye, where all the girlies be going. Um, you can receive non-surgical and cosmetic procedures such as Botox, fillers, PRP, brow lifts, and she also created one of my personal favorite skincare lines, Epilogic. Um, back when we had self care Sundays, we talked about it, and it just continues to be a huge part of my skincare routine. So, we're so excited to have you here to talk all things skin with us, as the product we created is for your skin. So, we thought who better to speak with than an expert um, and a friend of the show and a fellow business owner? You kind of are ticking all the boxes to be the perfect person to speak to. Oh my gosh, what an intro. Well, first off, I'm like yes. super excited to be back. I had such a fun time the first time around. I can't believe that was 2022. Like time flies, feels like it was yesterday, but I still hold you also dear to my heart. So I'm happy to be back to chat all things skin, skin care, beauty. So uh, this is a treat for me. Thank you. So, okay, we're going to jump right in because we're kind of in this like transitionary period. Well, okay. I, I don't know if I even want to call it a transitionary period because I'm in denial. Like I know that we're slowly transitioning into fall, but it's still summer. <laughs> so I would love like summer skincare advice, like must haves, but also like a little bit of like, what does that look like as you're transitioning into colder months, which I don't want to accept. I know it was like a little bit cool today and I got mad. So I feel you on like, you know, lamented <laughs> transition into fall. Um, I mean, I think the first obvious thing is like sunscreen, 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 right? Like it should be sunscreen all year round, but I know like I am and I assume everyone else is just kind of like taking advantage of like the glorious sunshine we have and like spending more time outdoors. And so you do have to be more diligent, which is kind of like applying your sunscreen and being more mindful about it. When I think about kind of like what it looks like to transition my routine from summer into fall, well, I'm like, okay, what sins have I committed this summer, right? Like I'm always doing a little bit too much time in the sun and I always have like some hyperpigmentation to clean up. Um, so you want to think about things that are going to like mm. help boost your cell turnover so you can start to clear those dark spots. Um, so for me, that means like leaning into my retinoids a little more because I tend to take a little bit of a break from my retinol and retinoid products over the summer. Um, I also become a little bit more lax with exfoliating over the summer. Um, I know a lot of people just feel the need to like do less with their skin, kind of like stimulate less, treat less. Um, so I would definitely like ramp up. Um, more of those kinds of actives, like the exfoliating actives, as I'm like getting my skin from post like sun damage to like fall cooler weathers where I can like be a little bit more um, daring with my routine, like a little bit more active focused. Um, 
also like I tend to do a little bit too much time in the sun and that tends to dry my skin out. Like I look dry, I look dull. And so now's the time when I really try to be more intentional with more hydration. So that's kind of like, that's how I tend to think about like moving the routine from summer into fall. What have I done wrong? What can I do better? How do okay, you so it's interesting thing? that you say that a lot of people pull back on their skincare routines in the summer. Um, I tend to do the same because I want to maintain the tan on my face. And I feel like it's very difficult to do if you're exfoliating or using acids. So is there a way to maintain that? Or is it just kind of, it just is what it is? I mean, I feel you. Like I'm in the same boat, right? Like I get that like beautiful summer glow and I'm like, don't leave me, right? When we think of skincare in the traditional sense in terms of like resurfacing and getting that like epidermal turnover, you can't have it both, right? If you're going to like exfoliate and um, like get the skin cells turning over, you're actually going to lose your tan. So you can't, in the traditional sense, have them both. Sorry. Yeah, I know. It pains me too. Um, well, we know that there's a lot of care that we need to take around uh, sun exposure. But I was curious as we're talking about, like, we don't want our tan to leave us. Are there other benefits from being in the sun, um, mm -hmm. you know, that we can maximize on in the summertime? Well, of course, you know, it's... protecting ourselves. Yeah, I mean... It's easy to tout vitamin D, but you don't actually need that much time in the sun to get your vitamin D stimulation, your vitamin D levels in order. Um, so in all honesty, like sun, like suntan is UV damage, all right? Unfortunately, like UV exposure and that glow that we love is actually sun damage, right? Like, when you see like that, that beautiful glow, that darkening of color, it's actually your skin cells and your melanin in your skin cells being like, ah, I need to go into protect mode. Like I'm being attacked by UV exposure. <laughs> like when you actually see your skin get darker, it's literally like your melanin forming this cap over your DNA to protect it from damage. So, um, I hate to say it because I'm the biggest hypocrite. Like all day, I will like talk to my patients, have a golden glow all summer long. And I'm like, you're staying out of the sun, right? Um, like I, I'm a sun worshiper. I like, I can't lie about it. I love the feeling of the sun. I love the look of the sun on my skin. I always kid that like, I look like death all winter long. I'm like sallow and pale. So like, I actually like the way I look once the summer months come around. Uh, but if we're being honest with ourselves, mm -hmm. like there's no real benefit to our skin to prolong sun exposure. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's fair. I feel like, you know, we've, we're kind of in this era of like kind of anti-sun rhetoric. And I understand why, because there can be so much damage, but the truth is people chase their tans all the girls I know, they, they tan. And I think one of the things that I'm excited about with our product is you don't need to stay out for as, as long in order to get the tan that you want. So you don't have to lay out for hours on end in the sun. You can lay out for half the time and still achieve whatever suntan you want. I feel like we've been having a lot of conversations, especially as Black women, around tanning and like how beautiful we now have learned to to feel versus when we were younger, a lot of us were taught don't get tan because you don't want to get, you don't want to be darker. You don't want to be dark skinned. Um, I don't know. How do you, how do you deal with your relationship as like specifically as a black woman um, with sun tanning and all of the rhetoric around it? I think my experience is probably like the inverse of what most people have. I was constantly getting clowned for being too light. Like I remember before like my uncle's wedding where I was the flower girl, my cousin put me outside in the sun and he was like, can you just stay out here for a little bit so you don't mess up our photos later? So like <laughs> I've always <laughs> like sort of like had this, um, this like little bit of a complex about like being a little too light. I think it's part mm. of why like I see myself in the winter and I'm like, oh God, I look so deadly, you know? Um, so 
I will say that like for myself, I've never had like this, this sort of like coming to terms with like wanting to be lighter, if anything, like I'm constantly chasing just a little bit of glow. Mm. I think it makes me look healthier. Um, like zooming out for myself and for my patients, like I see something similar. Like I don't, I don't really hear about the ladies wanting to like stay the same tone. I think everyone's super excited when they get that, like that little bit of glow when summer comes in. Um, I often kid with my patients when they come in the door, yeah. they're like, doc, look at me. Do I need anything? And I'm like, I don't know. It's summer. You're all gorgeous. Like I, I, I don't see anything to fix, you know, like <laughs> kind of when people are like glowing, they just like, everything looks better. And it's like, I feel like I'm going to have my medical license taken away from me the way I'm sort of like celebrating, like, just like how much a tan <laughs> does for us. But like, it's true. Like everyone looks better with a little bit of a tan, with a little bit of glow. We should not be doing it for the sake of our skin cells, right? Like, again, I will go back to the reality of it being damaged, but gosh, it looks and feels yeah. so good. So I, I want to kind of like pull back and I, I know we've told you about the product, but we can kind of share more like in depth around some of the ingredients and we worked with a chemist, but you are seeing things from a totally different perspective as a doctor and a dermatologist. So one of our biggest ingredients is tyrosine, um, which is like seen in a lot of, we found Italian products. To, it's like a this melanogenesis. Amino acid. Speed, yeah, I mean, but it like speeds up the process That's of melanogenesis, which we were like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> what is that? But now hearing you explain that the process of melanogenesis is actually our bodies are getting darker because it's like a protectant of the sun. So like, how does that work? Because we've even heard like, you could eat like tons of carrots and try and try to like speed up your melanin production. I mean, you'd have to probably eat like a bajillion, but like, what does this look like? Yeah. First, I just want to like disclaimer, I'm not a dermatologist. I'm a plastic surgeon. I know, I know a lot of people like confuse the terms, but I just like never want to. Oh my gosh. Um, my apologies. No stress. I just, yes. people coming to my office that I've been taking care of for years and they're like, oh my God, I get to see my favorite dermatologist today. And I'm like, no, I'm not a dermatologist. I'm a plastic surgeon. <laughs> Happens all the time. But I just want to put it out there for the world. You um, know why you got me? Because of your, your skincare products. I was like, duh. <laughs> All good. It happens all the time. But for the audience, I just want to make sure we're not misleading. Um, so that's super interesting, right? So you're mm -hmm. having a non-UV exposure stimulation of melanogenesis. I mean, like, that's super exciting. The, the like, the biology geek in me, like, loves to hear it. Um, I, uh, I'm super excited to try it. It makes sense, right? Like, because if you think about it, when we think about like melanin in our bodies, there are kind of like two pools, right? There's like the melanin that's responsible for like your baseline coloration, right? Like even when we're not exposed to the sun, we have our hair color, our eye color, our skin color, right? Like that's like our baseline. And then we have like the melanin that's like reactive. It's like reactive to UV exposure. So it sounds like you're finding a way to trigger that reactive element, um, but do it without the sun, which is like super interesting. Yes. So so it will speed up the process. So if you're laying out on the beach or going on a walk, you would apply your SPF, always apply your SPF, and then put our product on top. And it's going to give you one, like that extra glow because of just like the ingredients. We have a lot of oils. So castor oil, squalene, um, coconut coffee extract, like all the like pretty soft oils that are moisturizing. So I can just, I can show you actually, I have it here. So like I have some in my hand. Oh my gosh. So you're seeing it. It's Yay. a beautiful color. And then to try it. it just like kind of like immediately like shines up the body. And then when you, you pair that with like, whether you're baking or you're just like outside, it just gives you that like oomph. Ooh, it smells You're already really good. glowy and gorgeous. I just delicious. saw like post application. It looks, it looks so <laughs> like, luminous like in real time, right? 
It's magic. It's magic. <laughs> Lovely. I've got to say something that like I kind of love and I just have to mention, like no one thinks about black girls wanting to tan, right? So like, I think this is super cool. Like, I think a lot of mm-hmm. people are just yeah. like, wait, what? Black girl wants like time in the sun, wants to get darker. So um, I, I, I love this coming from you guys. No. I think it's great. A big part of our like formulation process, and I'd love to hear more about yours and Epilogic because also a huge fan, um, was creating something that was also clean and safe um, because we are huge fans of tanning, as I mentioned, and we use other products. And when we took it to the lab, they told us that these products had so many cancer-causing ingredients, which is crazy because we have had been slathering them all over our bodies. Um, so just wondering for like you as a founder um creating products that work but are also safe um how did you navigate that in building your brand had a lot of headaches took a lot of advil it's hard (laughs) i mean it's really hard (laughs) Whenever you're making a product, there have to be con- some concessions, right? Like there's a reason the like ultimate holy grail mm-hmm. does not exist. It's like, where are you going to pull back, right? Because no, you cannot formulate a thousand dollar product because then you have to sell it for $2,000. Right? And so the fact of the matter is a lot of these ingredients that are unsavory and we would rather not put on our bodies are economically favorable, right? There are shortcuts to formulating. Um, So I do think a lot of Mm -hmm. what goes into formulating and getting something that like you're proud of putting your name on is really being a stickler at each like point, at each checkpoint. Like I am willing to sacrifice this. I'm not willing to sacrifice that. Like what are those things to you? Because when it comes down to it, like this is a process with a lab and then you're going to go back and forth a million times until you get the product to look and feel and perform the way you want it to. And the lab while they want to create a great product with you, they also want to wash their hands of the process. Like, okay, <laughs> this is taking a while now. Um, we're not getting really a return on our investment from doing all these formulation rounds with you. Um, let's, I think you should be happy with where you are. So it really comes down to sort of like figuring out what's super important to you in terms of your product and like never compromising on those things. It's not, I mean, it's easy to say it's really hard to do because there are all these pressures from like consultants, partners, like you really want to be able to like be a good partner in the process. Um, but at the end of the day, the way I think about it, it's like my name on the bottle and not yours. And so like, you really just sort of have to like mm-hmm. put the non-negotiables. It's also why there are so many mediocre products yeah. out in the world. Let's be honest with you, right? Yep. That part. It takes so much time. And I think something we were navigating was we wanted to be dual use. So it's a tan accelerant serum, but also just like a glow serum. Like we always talk about those post vacay nights where you have on like your cute little dress or top or whatever it may be. And like your decolletage and back is all out. And you just want to like keep that glow from the day going into the night. And it was like the littlest things. We were like, we want it to give you a glow, but not be too shimmery. Like we don't want it to be like all these like tons of like shimmery specs. Like we don't want it to feel like glitter or like it's like, you know, like kids makeup where you like have so much stuff on you, but like we want it to be moisturizing. These people were probably like, what, what (laughs) did these girls want? But that was like such a big part of the process. And like, why we were so keen on the different like moisturizing elements of like the oils that we have, because to me, that's like the top tier thing on a vacay. Like it's nighttime. The like breeze is blowing. I'm like out at a dinner and everyone's just like, you're glowing. Your skin looks amazing, but it's not like tacky and gross. Like it's such a process to kind of like create this thing. And then again, yeah, none of us being chemists or having, being doctors or having any knowledge in this space. Yeah. I mean, even as a doctor, it's tough, right? Like sometimes my feedback would be like, 
make it sexier. Like, this is not sexy. I don't like this. I don't like this texture. Um, and like, you know, your partner wants to shoot you, obviously. Like, what? Um, <laughs> um, it's tough. It's tough. But it's like, it's part of the process. It's part of doing business, right? Like, you decide, like, what you stand for and what you, how you want to show up and how you want your customer to experience, like, what you're offering them. I love make it sexier. <laughs> I think we literally probably That's said clear. something similar. That's For clear, sure. no? You no, know, because like, the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, we, we thought yeah, a lot of the relationship a... that you have with your skin and, like, the experience of using uh, the products. And I would say mm -hmm. I, it's very clear that you, you made the same considerations. Right. Mm -hmm. Like it should be nourishing. It should, it should be effective as Chelsea said, but we want people to like luxuriate in their skincare practice. Yeah. In the application mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. That's so true. No, I was just going to like, you know, add like, you know, in particular for Epilogic, like what we're doing is like, we're creating like a new version of clinical skincare, like something kind of new. And so that's why it was so important for us to make it sensorial and have that sexy element, because I think everyone's used to clinical being so like cold and sterile and unfeeling and quite honestly, like exclusive. Right. And so we just kind of like wanted to shake up that notion. So that's why it was like, definitely not an afterthought about like what the textures felt like and that application experience felt like. Um, so another thing that we're seeing, and we kind of offlined about this for a bit, but I don't know if if you have been into the TikToks of self tanner, especially amongst Black women, but like it's Jackie Ina has the interwebs by storm. Glenn was telling me when she was in P Town. All of her like gay besties were self tanning, but like on their abs and muscles to like make them pop. So, are you seeing some of this trend yourself? And like, is it? I guess it's like a, a natural contour. Like when you're sun kissed, like do you look? I don't want to say slimmer. That sounds problematic. But like, <laughs> does it like highlight and like contour certain parts of the body? I mean, everyone's telling me I'm buff all of a sudden, and I look no different than I did three months ago. I'm just tan. So obviously there is something to like having a little bit of a tan and looking more defined. I haven't seen as much of the, um, of the body world of this contouring, but I did see a conversation that Brooke DeVard and Sir John had on the Naked Beauty co podcast. And Sir John was talking about this technique that he loves in terms of layering different sunscreens on his skin, like one with like lighter SPF in certain areas and like a heavier SPF in other areas. Yeah, so that's totally the hack, right? Like where you create your own natural contour by sort of like titrating where you're getting more or less sun exposure. Um, very controversial, right? Because like, it means that you are intentionally mm. allowing more sun exposure in certain places. And definitely people came for their throats in the comments. Um, but let's be honest with each other. Is anyone getting total SPF coverage all the time? Ending? Anyways, I don't know. Again, going to lose my medical license for defending that practice. Um, but um, it, it would work, right? I might try it. Can't lie. <laughs> you would be the one to try it, Shade. <laughs> like, I know you're saying that gen generally sun exposure, you know, it's pretty damaging. I was researching something about it being helpful for certain skin conditions. Is that true? Like skin conditions like eczema or psoriasis, for example? Yes. So there is some evidence that UV exposure can help some inflammatory skin conditions, like, like you just mentioned, psoriasis. But typically when um, derms treat that, they have like particular wavelengths of light they, that they will use rather than tell the patient, go expose yourself to skin cancer risk. Uh, they're able to sort of like titrate the wavelengths of light that are most helpful um, so you can mitigate like the risk benefit ratio while you're treating the condition. Um... Before we wrap, I'd love to know some of your favorite products right now. Of course, tell us all your favorite epilogue 
Logic products, but if there's like some additional things within your skincare arsenal that we should get hip to, we'd love to know. So I think I mentioned that come summer, I'm doing a little less with my skin. So from Epilogic, there are like four core products I'm using. I'm not going to like go into like super duper depth, but like, you know, just to kind of like satiate the curiosity I'm using our True Calm cleanser, like super gentle, like lightly hydrating, very like um, summer friendly because it's not exfoliating. I'm using Even Balance, which is like this super lightweight antioxidant hydrating toner. I'm using Master Plan, which is our growth factor and peptide serum. And then at night, I'm like layering up on the total package because I just, regardless of the season, I like to go to bed like dolphin, you know, um, thoroughly moisturized. I will say other products outside of the Epilogic universe that I am love, love, loving. Um, so Shani Hillian has the gorgeous brand In Groove. Um, and she has a cleansing oil called Every Mood. And because I do the most with sunscreen, um, I do, I don't typically double cleanse, but I am enjoying double cleansing with In Groove, especially like on my like sunscreen heavy days over the summer. Um, I am known for being like a maximalist when it comes to sunscreen. If you opened up my medicine cabinet, you would be like, whoa, you have a problem. Cause it looks like just sunscreen. Uh, I especially go hard for like the J Beauty and K Beauty sunscreens. Like I'm thoroughly obsessed. Like those textures just make me so, so, so happy. Um, some of my faves, like for example, I like Beauty of Joseon or Leaf Sun, Isn't Tree, the watery UV sun gel. There's also like the Biore UV watery sun gel, I think it's called. Um, like those are some of my favorites, but I like. I have a half a dozen more. I kid you not. Fabulous. Yeah, like, Shade it got lost. It was beautiful to talk to you while you're also bathed in the light of the beautiful sun. <laughs> and it's always a pleasure to have you join us here on Black Girls Texting. And so cool to be talking to you two years later. And now we're both, fat, we're all founders of products. Um, and to be I able to kind of be in this it. together is fantastic. We I'll always look to you as an inspiration in the industry. Oh my gosh. So thank you. Yes, you. I cannot wait to try your product. I just know ah. anything coming out of your capable hands is going to be excellent. And just from the preview I got and the glow from rubbing it on your arms, I know it's going to be a hit. So I can't thank wait. You. Yes. Thank, thank you. So much.